Hello everyone, welcome to Native Mobile Bits. And now we are at a stage that our application has multiple modules and soon we will have much more modules. When we implement other features, we are going to implement different modules as well. Now we need to make sure that our application architecture is scalable. And one of the most important thing we need to take care of is dependency injection okay if we are going to make a scalable application we need to handle this concept very well we need to take care of dependency injection so in today's video we are going to learn little bit about dependency injection and then I will show you how we start using dependency injection inside our application and I know that many of you must be knowing about dependency injection but at native mobile bits my motto is simple that I want to create something which Beginners can also understand and experienced person can also understand, right? So for everyone who are not familiar with this concept, let me tell you this. Dependency injection is basically a technique. So consider it like this. Suppose there are two objects and one object needs some data from another object. Okay. There can be two classes and one class can be dependent on any other class. And how one class can be dependent? Let's say there are two class, class A and class B. Okay. And then maybe this class A needs some information from this class B. Right. That means class A is dependent on class B. So these are dependencies and dependency injection is a technique where we deal with these kind of dependencies. In simpler terms, dependency injection is a technique where an object will receive some information about any other object on which it is dependent. Right? Let me show you one example. Okay, here is one example. Suppose we have these two classes, engine and fuel. Okay? So this engine class needs some information from fuel class. Basically, in simple terms, engine is dependent on fuel, right? So this class needs some information from this class, right? So this class is a dependent class and it is dependent on this class. So here, this class, fuel class, is a dependency for this engine class, right? And this is called dependencies. Now, how we can provide this fuel class to this engine class? that will be called dependency injection and a better approach for software development is we need to keep our modules or our classes loosely coupled and loosely coupled means one class should not know about any other class what this class is doing right so if we have two modules one module should be independent from other modules there should not be any dependencies Right. So if I tell you that we are already using this concept in our project, we have multiple modules here, right? We have these multiple modules. We are using these modules as a dependency inside this application module. This is also dependency injection. Now there are some tools which can help us to implement this concept easily. Okay. This is basically a design pattern. Okay. Dependency injection is kind of a design pattern for our applications for our softwares and this design pattern dependency injection tells us and inspire us that any class should not configure its own dependency but there should be one another class which will configure the dependency and provide to this class okay so that if a class needs something it should not be configured within this class there should be one different class that will do all the things and then it will provide to this. So in simple terms, if you are getting confused, let me give you one real world example. So in your company or in any company, we need multiple things to make our applications, right? We need coding part, we need some design files and all, right? But a developer need everything right a developer needs coding part also a developer need design screens icons also right but a developer should not start designing the icons and design screens right developers are dependent on designers okay 
so for developers we need icons and design set right but there should be another class as i told so there are designers designers are dependencies okay but this designer class means designer people they will design the icons and everything and they will provide these icons to developer are you getting it now developers need designs also but developer will not design on its own developers will use the designs and designer will do the design part individually are you getting it now so there are two class developers and designers developers need some design so developer has a dependency on designers right but there are independent identity designers are there okay and this is the same thing which this design pattern dependency injection tells us that if a class needs any dependency there should be one independent class which will provide the dependency okay so this is dependency injection okay now you must be thinking that how it will benefit our application as you already know that we are going to have multiple features multiple files multiple view models multiple logic files right multiple modules also so at the end main important thing is all of the features of our application should work and how we can validate those when we can test our code and how we can test our code when our code will be loosely coupled right so if you have 10 files how you can check those 10 files are working or not the simplest way is that you check all of those 10 files individually you get to know that file 1 is working and file 2 is working and so on all of the files are working properly as expected then you can say that everything is working fine you have tested your code and that you can do with the help of loosely coupled code if all of the files are dependent on each other it will be very tough to test all of those files right because if one file is dependent on any other file again you will take that file somehow inside one file as a dependency or as a constructor dependency or as a failed injection anyway but we want to reduce that we don't want to tell much about any other component to any component there are multiple n number of component be it a activity or a fragment or a view model or a repository but we don't want to tell view model that what is happening inside repository and we don't want to tell our view model that what is happening inside activity everything should be independent that is the main goal final inner peace if you have everything independent you have achieved something good in a team everything will work great if every player is doing its own job same way our project will work very smoothly if every unit of our project is independently working perfectly and later on you can refactor also very easily if you have all the files independently so if you want to refactor one file you can easily go and refactor that file right because that is not dependent on any other file so that other file logic will not be there only this file will have its own logic you can modify that and no other file will be harmed right so dependency injection has a lot of benefits and we are going to utilize those that's why i am trying to explain you guys why dependency injection is very important and you must be thinking this is a very advanced topic why we are covering it now because you can implement any feature be it firebase be it our chat sdk video call sdk anything in every feature we are going to use dependency injection that's why i am going to explain you from very scratch how we are going to implement dependency injection how we are going to write dependency injection for every feature 
be it navigation, be it our chat SDK related things, be it notification related thing, anything. See, first and foremost, we are going to have multiple modules. So there will be navigation between modules. So we want to, you know, utilize dependency injection in navigation as well. We want to create individual modules navigation route and then we want to just inject that route wherever we need right suppose you have two modules one module has four screens be it a fragment or a activity doesn't matter but there are four screens so four navigations can be there but if you want to use that navigation that means if you want to go to module B any file from module B from module A so we need one dependency injection approach because we don't want to define how we can go to this module we file inside module A. Module A is dependent on this but we want to beautifully create one approach which will allow us to go from one module to another module and that will be possible with the help of dependency injection. That's why I am trying to explain you dependency injection and its benefits and I will show you how we do all of this in our videos. Now there are multiple ways in which we can use dependency injection. So first and foremost is dagger and I'm sure that if you are familiar with dependency injection and you are Android developer you are familiar with dagger term. So in 2012 Square team created dagger. Now we have multiple tools to implement dependency injection. So after dagger, dagger 2 came. Dagger 2 was created by Google but still there were some drawbacks right because earlier we used to define all of the components, modules, scopes manually. I will explain you what are these things. At those times using dagger was a very challenging task because you was doing a lot of things to implement dependency injection. Now also you do a lot of things but now the process is little bit easier. That's why we have dagger hilt now. This is also created by Google and this is annotation based. Earlier whatever we was doing manually now we have annotation to do those things. So if you want to create a component or if you want to inject something these terminologies can be new for you but don't worry I will show you how to implement all of this but now we have annotation. Annotations means we have some commands some cheat codes you can understand it like this if we write those cheat codes it will do a lot of things for us we no need to do manually for example if you create an object so in java you used to write new class name right constructor in kotlin also an object name equal to class and then constructor using dagger hilt we have annotations like inject and if we do that at the rate inject it will do a lot of things for us we no need to write manually explicitly so in our next videos i am going to show you how we utilize dagger hilt okay we'll create some other separate videos using coin as well but my personal favorite is dagger hilt now because earlier i used to use dagger too but now I love using Hilt and Hilt is also officially recommended from Google if we try to use dependency injection in Android. So that's it for today's video guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'm trying my best to provide my learnings and my experiences at our channel Native Mobile Wits so that anyone can learn Android and if you enjoy this video please like share and subscribe to my channel and please comment please comment your favorite part of the video please comment your feedbacks please comment your suggestions just write a comment because youtube algo takes comments very seriously and it will provide two things if you will have any query i will reply you and you will get your answers and we will also please youtube algo so please subscribe to my channel, please comment your favorite part and I will see you in the next video very soon.